Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really interesting Ryzen powered mini PC that fits in the palm of your hand. Now this is from a company known as Shulu, and this is known as the XR1 Max. Recently, they wrapped up their Kickstarter. It was a successful Kickstarter, and through that, they did offer a few different SKUs, consisting of a couple different APU models, different storage, and RAM variants. They also had a bunch of different colors you could choose from. I think the orange was the best looking one. It's anodized aluminum, and this is the highest end variant that they offered, known as the Max version, with an 8-core, 16-thread Ryzen APU. Along with that, we also had 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 1 terabyte M.2 SSD in this tiny computer. Now, inside of the box with the unit that I received, I obviously got the XR1 Max Mini PC, a heavy-duty 6-foot HDMI cable, a 65-watt power supply, and of course that carrying case we saw at the beginning makes it really easy to take this basically anywhere you want to go with it. And you might have noticed that the front of this does look a little different than other mini PCs, and that's because there's an OLED display up front here, which is going to give us the time, fan speed, and CPU temp. I thought this was pretty cool, and the clock is updated once you get online, it'll automatically set it to your time zone. And for this thing being such a small form factor PC, we've actually got quite a bit of I.O. Up front, we've got one USB 3 port, one USB 2 port, a 3.5mm audio jack, and a full function USB Type-C port. This will do video out. Nothing much going on around the sides here, but we do have some ventilation, and these logos do light up. So as soon as you boot this up, it's got a white LED behind it. it looks pretty cool in the dark. And finally, around back, we've got our barrel jack for power in. Remember, this takes that 65 watt power supply that comes included, gigabit Ethernet, two full size HDMI ports, two more USB 3 ports, and two more USB 2 ports. So, in total, we've got seven USB ports on this unit, and it'll do a total of three displays out. Both of these HDMIs around back here, and USB Type C up front. Now, when it comes to the specs of the XR1, for the CPU, they opted to use the Ryzen 7 5800U. Not 6000 or 7000, unfortunately, so we are working with Vega graphics. It's got 8 cores, 16 threads, but these cores are based on Zen 3. Has a maximum clock up to 4.4 GHz. We've got that built-in Radeon 8i GPU up to 2000 MHz. Dual channel DDR4 at 3200 MHz, and it'll support up to 64 gigs. I've got a 1TB M.2 SSD, but you can add a 2TB if you wanted to. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and the unit that I have just happens to be running Windows 11, but it fully supports Linux in case you wanted to go that route. It's really up to you in the end. Alright, so I've been up and running for a little while now. I've installed some games because that's mainly what we're going to be testing here, but I definitely want to take a look at some 4K video playback just to see how it handles it. And you might notice that that OLED display up front on the PC looks like it's flickering. That's just from my camera's frame rate. Just keep in mind, you will not see this with your naked eye. Out of the box, the TDP on this will go up to 45 watts, which was really impressive given how small this thing is. And the cooler they opted to use is constructed of copper. It's got a blower style fan and it doesn't get too loud. Now at full boat with this thing running at 45 watts playing a game, you can hear it, but it doesn't sound like a jet engine. It's not whining too loud. And while doing web browsing video playback, it's very, very quiet for what we have here. Web browsing, very smooth with that Wi-Fi 6. And uh, like I mentioned, they did offer a few different colors over on their Kickstarter page. If we can get down here, I'll show you. We've got the orange, obviously, which I have here. White, blue, green, black, and red. So you do have options, and they also offer a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and the Max here has that Ryzen 7 6800U. Taking a look at some 4K video playback from YouTube, we'll just find kind of a little demo video here. We'll do 4K 60 with it. We should not have an issue with this, especially given that this does go up to 45 watts. Make sure we're at 4K. Turn Stats for Nerds on. We'll let it go. Up in the top left hand corner, you can see that this video is a 4K 60fps video. Dropped a couple frames, but you know, not bad at all. Nothing that you're going to notice. By the end of this, we only had 7 drop frames, and this could definitely be alleviated by letting it buffer out just a bit more before I hit play. But 4K on the 5800U has always been really, really good. When it comes to web browsing, email checking, video playback, this little PC is going to do it just fine. Really, what I wanted to test out here was some PC gaming. 
And the first one we've got here is Street Fighter 6. Right now we're at 720p low settings. I still think this game at 720p really isn't that bad. I also have Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. And you know, loading into this stage here, as soon as we started, it did jump up to around 36 watts, but then it leveled off to an average of around 26. So we're not even pushing this thing as hard as it could go. We could probably go up to 900p with it. Moving over to something a bit harder to run on these Vega-based iGPUs, we've got God of War. Now with all of the driver updates, we are seeing a lot better performance out of these APUs, but we're not at 60 even at low with FSR set to performance low settings. Unfortunately, we would have to drop it down to ultra performance with FSR, and then it just looks really, really bad, super pixelated, but you could lock it at 60 like that if you don't mind playing it. I figured I'd go ahead and run the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is one that I really never tested on the 5000 series APUs. It's not looking horrible here, but we are at 720p lowest settings. And at the end of this, we had an average of only 59 FPS. Next up, we've got Horizon Zero Dawn. FSR is set to performance, we're at 720p, and you can see it definitely looks really pixelated like this. There's a lot of settings that we can change with this game to make it perform really well on a ton of different systems, but it's really going to take that resolution down. And with it set up like this, we got an average of 73 FPS, a low of 29, and a max of 154. Here's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, and if you've ever tested this on any APU, you know it can be hard. And, you know, going back to Vega here, I knew we weren't going to get great performance. And right now, we're at 720p low with FSR set to performance. We only got an average of 47 FPS by the end of this run. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. I was really hoping we could get a steady 60 out of it, especially the way I have it set up. FSR is set to performance, 720p, low settings. And when I say low, I mean I go through all of the settings and turn them down to low or either off. We only got an average of 56 FPS, but keep in mind, if you don't mind playing this at 30, you could actually take it up to 1080p the way it's set up right now and just lock it down at 30. Whenever I'm testing these micro PCs, I always like to take a look at total system power consumption. And while this is going to pull a lot more than an ARM-based single board computer, we are seeing a lot better performance. This is plugged into a kilowatt meter while I'm running all of my tests. And idle, we pull around 8 watts. Average gaming, 41 watts. And the maximum I could get this to pull from the wall in an extreme test was 63 watts. Power consumption and performance is definitely on par with most of the other 5800U powered mini PCs on the market. I'm glad that we were able to take this up to 45 watts right out of the box. You could use a third party app to go a bit higher, but the cooling system is a bit limited. I think it's good for 45, never hit thermal throttle or anything like that, but it's not a massive cooler like we see in much larger PCs. Overall, the XR1 Max is a pretty decent performer given that we're only using a 5000 series Ryzen APU. Now we're up to 7000 right now and this is getting a bit dated when you compare it to the performance we see with those RDNA 3 graphics. And remember, this doesn't even utilize RDNA 2, this is Vega because we've got that 5000 series Radeon AI GPU. I do like the form factor, it's coming in really, really small. I personally like the design they came up with because it's much different than anything else on the market. And I could use this as my everyday PC for web browsing, email checking, I could even do some light photo editing on this. Emulation would work really well on this, some Wii U, some PS2, and even some Switch games would run. But when it comes to iGPU PC gaming, it is falling short of Ryzen 7000 just because with 7000 we have those RDNA 3 graphics and DDR5. So in the end, it's up to you, really depends on what you're going to do with this. And another thing to keep in mind is they are offering a couple different APU SKUs with the XR1. This is the max version with the Ryzen 7. They also offer Ryzen 5 that'll have a 6 core, 12 thread APU. And they have Ryzen 3, which is going to be their lower end offering. If you want to check out the other options they offer, or if you just want to learn a little more about the Max version, I will leave some links in the description. And if you want to see anything else running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.